this is Gary Fox here, and uh, tonight we're going to talk about the Cartesian coordinate system. Which don't let that big word throw you. Uh, you know it. You've already dealt with it probably many times in your life. But uh, you'll see what that means here in just a minute. The reason we're going to do this is that we're heading toward, uh, I'm going to do a little bit backing up and talking about math a little bit more than what I have in the past and I'm going to do it in videos this time because uh, we're going to be talking about buoyancy eventually which I have posted a couple of things on way back there when we was talking about PVC and a, uh, a raft made out of PVC pipe and uh, things it's an expensive way to build a raft, and so I want to talk a little bit more detail about how I did the calculations there so that those of you that decide you want to build a raft of some sort, you got some better ways of calculating to get an approximate idea of how, how well that raft will float. Uh, and that's kind of surprised me that there were a lot of questions about that, so... This, uh, this should be pretty helpful to anybody that's deciding that they may want to do that. Okay, anyhow, we're going to start out with something very basic called the number line. The number line, and of this one is going to be in the horizontal direction, and I've, I've chosen to draw this thing. The number line is basically like a ruler. Uh, and you have a starting point, which I make it zero, and I made it right in the middle of this one. And it has increments, and this one has increments of 0.1. That's 0.1 units. Units could be inches, could be millimeters, centimeters, kilometers. I guess kilometers is a better way of saying that. Uh, miles, uh, yards, whatever you want. We chose to do it in decimal units, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, you'll see why in just a little bit, uh, in about two videos, hopefully, of why I chose to do it in a tenth of a unit. But those are fixed points. Now there's lots of points in between. There's like an infinite, infinite amount of points in between because you could always go 1.1, sorry, 0.15 would be right in the middle of that between 0.1 and 0.2 or 0.125 which would be right in the middle of those two points or 0.1125 or you could continue on down to 0.1000001 which would be really close to 0.1 so in other words you can get as accurate as you need to get you could also zoom this thing out instead of the end here being point or one, it could be ten or a hundred or a million or a trillion or a billion or whatever kind of number you want to make it. So this line goes out to infinity, starting from zero to infinity, and it also goes in the opposite direction to infinity, negative infinity. And we say that if you're going in this right hand direction, it's going in the positive direction, and if you're going in the negative direction, or the left direction, you'd be going into the negative. If this was a map, this would be east, and that would be west. Um, as you, uh, I guess, that's something that people that live outside of the U.S., since we're west of everyone, uh, they might have something to to laugh at about there. You're going backwards if you go toward the west. Ah, uh, sorry. Dumb joke. <laughs> anyway, um, that's basically what the number line is. So we chose to make ours in 0.1 units increments. Okay, this zero point right in here is normally just your reference. You just make zero wherever you want to make it, but that is zero is our reference point. And it's called the origin of this line. And it's got an origin and it goes infinity in both directions. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do a line that's completely perpendicular. So what we will do 
is that we will draw ourselves a line that goes in the opposite direction, perpendicular. So that way, anytime we go straight up or straight down, it doesn't affect the point that we're going in the uh, other direction. So we'd it's north and south, but it wouldn't affect our direction east or west. And that means that those points, the terminology for that is they're orthogonal. One has no effect on the other. They're perpendicular to each other. If we had a point, that, if we had a line that we chose to draw that axis at a, let's say a 45 degree angle, as we moved up that axis, it would have an effect on the other axis. By being perpendicular, it has no effect on the opposite axis. Okay, by terminology, they call this the x-axis. The horizontal axis is called the x-axis, and the vertical axis is called the y-axis. I didn't go to the trouble of numbering these points, but it works exactly the same way. We're using the same measurement of point 0.1 for each one of the tick marks. So this is plus point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4, point 0.5, etc. on this y-axis. The y-axis also goes to infinity, and as we go down, we go negative this is negative 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, down here to negative 1.0, and it would continue on to infinity. And you have an infinite number of points in between these at each, each uh, of these increments. Again, you can go as close or as far away as you want. Okay, now let's, um, let's do the next little step here. I am going to turn off the tick marks. And what normally happens is that people draw a grid instead of the tick marks. So this is your typical graph paper. And we now show this point right here where there's the green line and the red line cross. And normally those are also just done in black also, but I chose to make them red and green to make it a little bit easier to see. And this point right here where they cross is zero 0, 0x, zero 0y. Zero That's called the origin. Again, we can move our origin around. It's our reference, our starting reference point. If we were cutting a block of wood, that reference point might be where it's the corner of the block of wood or a corner of a piece of paper that we're designing something on. Or it might be right in the middle of the piece of paper and we just draw an X to mark the spot where the uh, origin is. But that is our origin from that point on. <laughs> um, so you can have an origin, I can have an origin. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's basically the, for this graph, 0, 0 is the origin point. 0x, zero 0y. Zero okay, what I've done on drawing this graph to make it a little easier to count the points, I made the lines, the fifth line, a little bit darker than I did the other line. So this is 5, 5 in the, X, in the Y direction, and this is 1, or actually 0.5, and this one is 1.0 1, 1 in the uh, Y direction. This one is 0.5 in the X direction, 1.0 in the X direction. Same thing with the negative numbers. Did the same thing there, just to make it easier to count. And once you do that, we can turn off our text right there. Since it kind of junks up our graph there, and we can just count the number of squares. Remember, you can always have, you can always be in between squares. But we are going to choose nothing but whole numbers to make life easier for ourselves while we're learning. Always take baby steps. Okay, how would you locate a point on this grid? Oh, and I need to take one little step backwards. There also you can have another axis on this called the z-axis. It would be pointing straight out at us. The positive z-axis would be. But that gets to be hard to draw on a two-dimensional piece of paper. And so why complicate our lives? So right now we're just going to deal with the two-dimensional two plane right here with uh, just X and Y axis, and that's going to be enough for what we have to deal with uh, to calculate the buoyancy problem that we're talking about. Okay, 
Now let's talk about something called the quadrants because you're going to hear about the quadrants. Meanwhile, I'll turn off the grid for just a second. Okay, if the X number is positive and the Y number is positive, then you're in what's called coordinate 1. If the X number is negative and the Y number is positive, you're in coordinate number 2, quadrant number 2. I'm sorry, quadrant number 2. If X is negative and Y is negative, you're in quadrant 3. If X is positive and Y is negative, you're in quadrant 4. Okay, the biggest thing I want you to really remember on that is that it goes counterclockwise. It goes from, or anti-clockwise, I guess, in some countries. It goes from 1 over to 2 here by going counterclockwise to 3 over to 4 and then back to 1. A point that's right on a origin line is in not in is not in any quadrant. It's between quadrants, but people don't normally say that. You just say it's not in a quadrant. And uh, that was a big thing that was advertised way back when I was uh, when I first got into engineering, electrical engineering. They used to call advertise drives as having four quadrant control, and we can talk about what that meant back in the day. But right now we're not. <laughs> so quadrant is is a point, a term that's used, and it will be used in the future here very soon. Okay, we're going to turn the grid back on, and we're going to talk about how points are written down. Points are written in the form of a parentheses, X with a comma, and then the Y value. So we will use an example here. We've got a point 1. Okay, it's located at point 2x, and I wrote 2x there, but point 2, using our units that we had earlier, point 2x and point 4y. So that should say point 2, comma, point 4, but I wrote 2, 4. Uh, it's on the second line and the fourth line. So that's the way you number the points. We'll do another example here. Point two. Point two is zero on the y axis, but it's minus seven on the x axis, so it would be written as minus seven, comma zero. Okay, we'll do a third point. Our third point is going to be minus seven, it's straight up above the uh, previous point, minus seven, but it's positive. So that's the x value, but the y value is plus 5. And then the final point, we'll do the final point here uh, that I've got. It's 8 in the x-axis, minus 4 in the y-axis. Okay, where we're going to go next, and I'm going to do that in the next video, is talk about how you get to these points if you're... Uh, how, you, how far they are apart from each other. And there's two ways of describing that. But for right now, I want you to memorize a few words. The x-axis, the y-axis, the uh, quadrants, one through four. Uh, and basically, the whole idea that you can zoom in, you can zoom out to whatever kind of resolution you need to get when you're, you're looking at this graph. It's whatever works for the purpose that you're using. And uh, that's basically it. The whole graph is called the Cartesian coordinate system. And that means basically it's done as blocks where you're moving horizontal and vertical directions. And if you think about it, like a lot of towns are laid out in this kind of system. For instance, my hometown that I grew up in the river divided by east, the river flew, flowed east and west, and the main street, which was called Main Street, went north and south, and so they numbered the streets that were parallel to Main by numbers, one, two, three, four, and they numbered the uh, streets that were east-west streets as A, B, C, D. Now, the only thing that they did was that 
they numbered them one, two, three, four in this direction also. These, these they called them northeast, and these they called southeast. But the uh, other streets, I'm sorry, it was northwest and southwest. Uh, the others, they just called them north and south. Either way, it didn't work. It worked, and uh, it was okay to uh, find your way around in that town. That was probably the easiest town that I've ever been in. Uh, no curvy streets with the name, until they got out to residential areas, with the name like Wandering Way or anything. It was just South A Street or Southwest 4th Street, <laughs> so on and so forth. So it was really easy to find your, uh, your way around that town. Okay, that is coordinates, uh, Cartesian coordinate system. And by the way, these points are called the coordinates of that point. 2, comma 4 is the uh, coordinates of point 1 right here. So, I think we're through with this right now. Very soon I'll have a video out about how you find the distance between these two points. Oh, also remember what the origin is. And remember that it's relative to whatever you want to draw it to. So if you're doing a, cutting a piece of wood, this might be the corner of the wood. If you're cutting a uh, anything as plate like a, a piece of metal or whatever, you can make your origin wherever you want to make it. And then you draw your perpendicular lines parallel to wherever you're, you draw your first lines. Appreciate you listening. Hopefully uh, this is understandable. If you have any questions, uh, go to my blog. Uh, this will be referenced to the blog post. And at the blog post, there is an email address, and you can contact me there. You can also comment either on the video or on the blog post. And uh, I will get a hold of it eventually, and we'll get back to you. Thank you for watching. This is Gary Fox of Create and Make.